Good afternoon. Welcome back. Kent Bain with Nine Business Group. Uh, joining us today is Meryl. And I have no idea how to pronounce your last name, so I will introduce Meryl. Please introduce yourself. Please pronounce your last name. Most importantly, your company, what you do, what makes you awesome, what makes you different in competition. Welcome. Thank you so much, Kent. Very nice to have uh, have been invited here on the on your show today. And um, my name is Miral Mehta. I'm an ophthalmologist uh, and an entrepreneur. And um, the two companies that I have, one is the Stellar Integrated Eye Care, which is an integrated eye care business that I bring uh, to Edmonton and Alberta, mainly to serve um, uh, as a one-stop shop eye care for everybody. Um, the second business is Atom Health, which is like a digital health business, um, which is an AI-based uh, digital data platform um, that I work um, uh, in the in the field of digital health. Cool. Okay, so like you know, all good entrepreneurs, we need more than one thing to do because you know, when we can have one, why can't we can't have two? So <laughs> yes, talk to me, talk to us a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey. Kind of what got you started into business, why you're an entrepreneur now, and and what is it doing for you, and why keep doing it, I guess, um, and why keep adding things to the desk? I think the biggest reason um, I am doing what I'm doing and I'm motivated every single day to do this is uh, because of the impact that I would like to create. Um, I became a physician thinking that that is the best way you can impact people's lives. And um, um, that's how I got into medical school um, and uh, got my degree in ophthalmology. Um, and while in my day to day, sometimes I realize that, yes, in a day, how many patients can I serve? Can I serve 20, 50, 70, 100? How many? And beyond that, what? Um, and uh, I feel that there is a lot more for me to be able to give and uh, to do um, for more people than what I can see in a given day. And that is the reason I am in this field of healthcare and uh, digital health. I get it. I can relate. Yes, because one to one is limiting in a way, mm -hmm. you know, probably to, you know, less than maybe a couple hundred a year. So as you've gone back through your years in your entrepreneurial journey, back to medical school, now being on your own, what has been the biggest challenge you've had to face and how did you overcome it? I would say the the biggest challenge for me has been that uh, the transition from um, leaving my country, leaving India and coming here and uh, in spite of the human body basically not changing at all, uh, the whole system changes. And because of that, um, you have to undergo the same education process all over again. It's not a short one. It's a 10 year process that I went through in order to be able to be who I am. And then coming here, uh, and then transitioning into the practice, I would say that has been my biggest challenge. And now that I've overcome that, um, the smaller challenges of the business, um, I, I don't consider them to be as big as what was the beginning. So the smaller challenges of the business, like um, staffing issues or finding the right team and um, retaining talent. So all those things are, I would say, um, a smaller part of the problem. Well, I'm glad that is, I guess, one thing we can all wish for as entrepreneurs that as we get stronger, better, more proficient, the challenges become smaller and easier to overcome. So good mm -hmm. for you. If there is one lesson, one thing you've learned recently, maybe in the last year or two, that has been significant in your stage of growth in your business and your personal life, in your entrepreneurial journey, that you would want to go back and tell young Dr. Merrill, what would be that one greatest lesson that was like, figure this one out sooner yet, knucklehead? <laughs> I think the most important thing that I would like to tell my my younger self would be that whatever I started in the last five, six years and COVID actually pushed me to do things a little bit different um, because there was a lot of time in hand. And also at the same time, um, you sometimes push your dream like, you know what, I'll do this next year. I'll do this in two years time. I'll do this in five years time. So COVID pushed things to happen much more sooner for me. And uh, what I would tell my younger self is that don't wait for a catastrophe to uh, make big decisions. Uh, just take the jump when you get the idea and when you think you can do it, just start it. Don't wait for the right just time. Get started. Yeah. Was there a fear or hesitation in not starting sooner? I think um, uh, fear of failure. 
Um, and uh, failure in the sense that, like, you know, um, when you're already settled uh, into a very good comfort zone of working in uh, two, three different offices and as, as an associate, uh, you are already a part of the system and then you decide to change the system. Uh, do you really need to? Um, does it really, uh, what does it change for people? What the major change that you go through as compared to that, will you be able to make that kind of an impact? So I think that kind of fear uh, of failure um, was the biggest reason to delay that. Okay. You don't have to answer, but I'm curious. Was the fear real? How, <laughs> how did you overcome it? What What was the reality? We call it um, uh, leaving a comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So what was your experience leaving the comfort zone? And was the other side as scary? Did the, the big hairy monster exist? Um, what actually happened as you went and, and took that brave choice? So the other side of the monster does not exist. It exists only in your head. <laughs> oh, all I, the bad, I agree. Yeah, all the big bad things that you think about, you realize that oh, this was um, this this was just your mind uh, fooling you into staying in your comfort zone. And um, yes, there were other challenges. I wouldn't say that everything was easy and everything was smooth. It was not. But at the same time, uh, we tend to exaggerate the fear um, because being in the comfort zone is easy. And then once you, once you jump the fence, that's when you realize that, okay, it wasn't so bad. And it is definitely rewarding because you are in fact able to make the impact that you wanted to. And you feel much more stronger at the end of the day. I think there's, thank you. There, there's two things to jump out of there for me. One um, is just simply asking that question of what if. For all the folks mm -hmm. out there who are kind of thinking of taking the leaps, it's like, okay, what if? Just play that what if game. What mm -hmm. if this changed? What if that changed? What if this? And um, okay. I was listening to a podcast, uh, one of my favorite podcasts, and I was talking about that exact same thing. What changes on the other side of success? What changes on the side of that comfort zone? And he shared a personal story. It was like, just the friendships, the, the peer group changing. And then he said something that was critical to me is like, what if? What if they're cooler? What if they have better toys? What if they're more fun? And so mm -hmm. a lot of us, I know myself, have looked back at times, kind of looked at the peer group and went, I'm comfortable here. Mm -hmm. But I never put those le that lens on those glasses on to go, what if it was more time with them and more time with those people? And, mm -hmm. and doing that is like, oh, for me, that was a huge jump, jump just to right. really even understand what if. And that right. kind of just gives us some perspective. So thank you for uh, leading us into that conversation very much. Most important question. Mm -hmm. There was a pirate, a thief in your business. Okay. What are they stealing? My ideas and my way of running the business. Do you, do you run it in a certain way? Don't you run it like all business owners? How, how, what does it mean to run your business your way? Um, I think um, my priorities, uh, I always prioritize an extremely good work-life balance, no matter what it is that I'm working on. And from that point of view, um, I think uh, my biggest priority when I run a business is to automate so many different areas of the business uh, whether it is with the help of other team members or uh, technology, but I automate things so much that it makes life for me as well as my team members much more easier. And we all can do a lot more in a certain amount of time and that way everybody gets a good work-life balance. Okay, I got a really fun one for you. Okay. Looking forward to the... What is your definition to be successful? What is your definition of business success? You know, it's funny you ask this question. I was just with my um, girlfriends last night and um, uh, one of them went on a holiday for two to three weeks and uh, her coach asked her this question and asked her to mull over that. And this was the exact question that we discussed, how her definition of success changed from day one to day 20 of the vacation. And I've been thinking about that this morning. I would say currently... Uh, because I haven't had the chance to dig deep into it, but I would say that currently the definition of success for me is um, enjoying what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, um, 
feeling uh, confident that I am making the impact that I wanted to make. And at the same time, um, ensuring that I'm growing on a personal side as well, um, in the sense that I'm having time with my family, I'm uh, spending uh, quality time with them, I'm raising my own kids uh, instead of uh, relying on outside help. And I would like to learn so much from them on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think it's success is a mix of so many different things for me. It is indeed. I think that's the beauty of, of entrepreneurship, at least for me, is mm -hmm. one of my coaches many, many years ago shared that, and, and it's stuck. Business is nothing more than a vehicle mm -hmm. to help entrepreneurs do things in life and to explore life. So mm -hmm. really, it's like if we build it, where do we want us to take it? What do you want your business to do for you, to serve mm -hmm. you, to help you? And I think that's the best way of looking at it is really like, do we really want to just cross the street? Do we want to build a vehicle that takes us across town to a different city? through a, do a mm. different province? Do we want to make an airship and fly around the world? And I think entrepreneurship really is that opportunity to have an abundance of choice. So again, thank you. And last most important question. Okay. Who's your ideal client and where should they find you? Um, the businesses that I am in, like, you know, I have a very multifaceted client. And um, I think um, I would not, um, and if I have to reduce that number to a smaller number, I would not count my patients as my clients. Like I would count the patients as the people who I'm serving. So I would exclude them from that. But I think an ideal client for me is, um, is somebody who is uh, interested in uh, making an impact at the junction of uh, health and technology. And um, we combine our forces together to serve different areas of healthcare. I would Excellent. say that. And where that do they the... find you? Where do they get more information? They can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Meryl Meta. Um, they can find me on LinkedIn or Instagram um, and um, uh, shoot out a message and I'd be happy to connect. Excellent. Thank you very much. Love the insight. Keep smiling. I love it. Uh, keep enjoying entrepreneurship. And we're looking forward to hearing the rest of your story. Okay, thank you so much, Kent. You're welcome.